what kind of conversations, how old were your daughters, if you don't mind me asking at that time? I mean, how did you have the conversation with your husband? Because a lot of times, you know, it's how, how, how did you sit down with them and say, you know, this is what's going on. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. When did your daughters come to know about it? How did you tell them? We told our daughters that, that, we, that I was given a serious diagnosis of cancer. Looking back, I realized that my nine-year-old was probably um, more oblivious than we knew. But on the flip side, my tw our 12-year-old was more mature and knowing than we knew. And as time went on, uh, the 12-year-old internalized the, the situation uh, to the point where uh, I wish I had gotten her psychiatric or psychological help because she internalized it so, so f with such finesse that we actually thought she was okay when she when wasn't. she was not. And the, the internalization problem ended up uh, becoming irritable bowel syndrome. Or something. As, something. Uh, as when she went to college. Um, could have had a wonderful scholarship at my alma mater, eight hours away, didn't want to go no. be that far away from her mother. Always the fear of reoccurrence, always the fear of, uh, you know, the abandonment of not having me. The, the nine-year-old was young enough to uh, maybe have skirted around the issue and had uh, some minute, you know, defense mechanism kick in that she did, she did better than the older child. So I certainly would have done things differently. I think and that's a very important point that it's care for the caregiver also or care for the family members. We always, always focus on, let's say as physicians, on cancer, we're going to treat it, we're going to do this. But there's a whole psychological component to it. There's a whole, uh, you know, emotional component to it that is completely, that affects families that, that I feel sometimes gets left out when we're just focusing on one thing. And I will add that I tr we tried to give them a very normal uh, lifestyle. We're a funny family. Humor is something that, that is a bond in our family. And, you know, sometimes you know, maybe we were more funny than we should have been. But, you know, the dinner tables. And we tried to keep normality. So, like my daughter would say, you know, even though it was normal, how normal is it when your mother has no hair? You know, and I would make jokes because I was in the uh, television industry at, at the time, and I'd say, hey, what if I sold ads on my head for my television show? <laughs> and my daughter would say, hey, because I had one breast at the time and I didn't get reconstruction, my daughter would say, hey, mom, what if you got a part-time job at Hooters? <laughs> <laughs> get it? Part-time? Part <laughs> so, uh, you know, we tried to use humor, but um, I never... I also wanted to be an example. I wanted to be a role model. I wasn't going to feel sorry for myself. I wasn't going to let um, I wasn't going to let my illness come between a normal life or my normal activities as a mother. I never stopped working. I never st went stopped going to the PTO. I never stopped cooking. I never stopped gardening. I never stopped being mom.